Joining me right now is the Bonson Group founder, the author of DividendCafe.com. David Bonson is here. David, thanks very much for joining the conversation. Do you disagree with what you heard from the bank CEOs that we are likely headed into uh, some uh, dire uh, straits on the economy's front? No, I mean, it's impossible to disagree with them that we're headed into some form of slowdown and contraction. The disagreement will just come down to the severity of it, Maria. Uh, nobody knows how bad it will get because the problem is mixed data. I mean, it really is a conundrum when you see reasonably strong labor data up against mostly other negative points. So the one positive continues to be in reasonably low unemployment, decent wages, and then everything else around it trending negative. That, mix, that makes for a tough mix of economic news. Well, look, we had that most recent inflation report and food prices stayed uh, painfully high, even though you did see a little let up in the price of oil. Food inflation continues to be elevated. Even shelter uh, is, is elevated. I mean, rent as well as buying a home, even with mortgage rates where they are. What's your sense of the most important impact of this 40 year high inflation? Um, I have no doubt that it's in food inflation. Uh, actually, rent prices in August came down for a month over month for the first time in quite a while. And that's because they're so painfully overpriced, as you point out. Um, the way that they measure CPI, there's quite a lag in when the housing prices and what they call owner's equivalent starts to come down. So that continues to hurt the number on the housing side. But the food prices are real time. And that's the point that I think is most sticky and problematic politically and in the way we're gauging all the inflation because I'm seeing trucking prices coming down, used car prices coming down, and none of those things are necessarily good. You want the inflation lower, but if they're coming down because of economic slowdown, that can be problematic. But inflation and yeah. in food is the area where people feel it the most. And all of this has led stock markets to sell off. Uh, you've got uh, the Dow Industrials down in the double digits year to date. Uh, you've got the Nasdaq down 30 percent year to date. And it was another week of losses this week. Uh, David, how do you want to allocate capital differently with this new macro story that seems to be slowing and slowing fast? I really want investors to think about two different stories. It's not all one. The first story is a lot of things that were overpriced getting hammered. And that when you see the NASDAQ down over 30 and other things within the NASDAQ, even some big tech names down over 50%, that's about prices having to correct because they were so overvalued. But then the second story is everything else, Maria. It's like you mentioned the Dow down double digits, consumer staples, industrials, things in the economy that were not like tech. And they're coming down because of the fact that people perceive economic slowdown as a byproduct of the Fed tightening. So liquidity coming out of the market, a higher cost of capital, pushing expectations lower, and bear market investing is difficult and painful. And I have to say, having done it now through several cycles myself over the last 25 years, bear market investing is where we make all of our money. I think the mm -hmm. courage to be able to put money to work in down prices and not worry that you've hit the exact bottom that is ultimately a great opportunity for long-term investors. I want to get your take on the globe as well, because this week the U.K. came out with a new tax cut package. Uh, it will add to their debt, and almost immediately a U.K. stock sold off. You also had a whole host of central banks across the world raising interest rates this week, taking a cue from the Federal Reserve. Do you see a problem around debt that could engulf the entire world, making the U.S.'s recession that much tougher? Oh, Maria, we live in a problem of excessive global indebtedness, and we've lived in it for over 10 years, and we're going to live in it for another 10 to 20. It's the economic problem of our day, not just in America, but around the globe, excessive indebtedness, and there's simply no easy way out of it. It's very troubling. David, it's great to get your take on all of that. Thanks very much for being here this weekend. Authorities in Florida busting up a massive drug trafficking operation, and a Florida 